What is good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Fox's Den. Getting into another reaction. Finally got some new One Piece to get into. We missed a one, we missed a One Piece episode last week. Not missed. We had a break from the One Piece anime last week. I don't know particularly why. Uh, maybe for the release of the most recent chapter, which was fucking crazy. Uh, any manga readers out there, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. This shit was amazing. But that's not what we're talking about in this reaction. No spoilers. Don't you fucking dare comment anything about the fucking manga, you motherfuckers. <laughs> episode 1097, 1097, whatever you want to say. I'm so excited for this. The last episode we left off on was a really, really good one. And it really hit the feels for, I think, everybody. Uh, I mean, espe uh, not especially, but like it definitely did for me whenever I watched it, just because of all of that backstory of, you know, v Vega Punk bringing up, you know, what, you know, what went on with Ohara, like getting that info again, but from another person's perspective, because it's something that we already know about, like what happened, right? Like we know why the government did it and the buster call and all of that. And, you know, all this stuff about, you know, why Robin ended up alone and was considered a demon child. I mean, it, this goes all the way back to Ennis Lobby when we were first learning about Ohara, right? So this is a long time ago. But getting it from another person's perspective, especially Vegapunk, and getting more info on top of what we already knew was just such an amazing monumental moment and really uh, some closure for Roby. And as you can see, like after Vegapunk was done telling that story and how she broke down into tears and it wasn't like it wasn't like sad tears. It might have been a combination of both, but it was like sad and happy, like, holy shit, like they really like what my mom said. They really did that shit. Like this is this this is important stuff that is going to help us in the future. Like it's going to help you young ones in the future. That's what her, that's what her mom said, and it's happening right now. Like that that information, those books that they all saved and sacrificed their lives for. The information is still here. It's still in the world. It's not that it, you know they didn't sacrifice their lives for nothing. And uh, as far as what we learned from Vegapunk is that the books are with, you know, the revolutionaries because apparently Vegapunk met with Dragon and I guess they, you know, we're thinking the same thing. They both came to give flowers uh, and show the respects to Clover, the archaeologist. So the fact that we got all that info on top of something that we already knew uh, and some even more backstory on that whole Ar Ohara thing and the books being saved and, you know, the... the <laughs> the people that were there that went to go show respect Vegapunk a huge name Dragon Revolutionary is a huge name I mean this is the type of stuff that I'm talking about that like how how does how does Oda come up with this bro like how does he connect all this type of shit because it's just it's it's almost perfect it's almost perfect in the way that this story is connected and, and how he keeps on connecting the dots like this I mean it's just nothing short of amazing so that was such a good episode that we got two weeks ago so i'm very excited to get into this one hopefully continue down you know a little bit more of information that we get and then also we got the huge reveal of the actual vegapunk last episode too so maybe we'll see vegapunk actual vegapunk luffy and his little group bonnie and them meet up with the rest of luffy's crew uh since they've been separated for a little while and uh get more information or or whatever and uh, learn more about Egghead as a whole since we have the actual Vegapunk in front, or we've met all of them now, the satellites including the uh, original Vegapunk and uh, you know, let's just see where we go from there. So, amazing stuff. Can't wait to get into this. Let's get let's get let's get into it. I, I, I can't wait any longer. If you guys enjoy the reaction, please like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. Let's get into it. One Piece 1097. All right, title right away. The Inherited Research. All right, we're getting some more. All right, I fucking love this. Ohara West Blue 20, 22 years ago. Oh, we're going to we're getting we're going into the actual flashback. No more narration for a little bit. All right, all right, all right. I like this. Several months after the Buster call. This is when he came across the books and they were retrieving them. <laughs> That's, an, that's, that's exactly what he said to Robin. It's, it's a victory for Ohara. Wow, look who it is, bruh. 
<laughs> I love this, bro. I fucking love this shit, man. <laughs> His big ass head. Oh, this is fucking legendary, dude. This is fucking legendary. Age 33. Age 43. He's 10 years older than Dragon. Mm. Yep. Stupid ass fucking government. This is how they came to be on the same page. うん。ああ、ファッキングアソールブラ。オーダーがイノチがけで残した財産はこのまま歴史から警察や市内。ああ、ファッキングアソールブラ。オーダーがイノチがけで残した財産はこのまま歴史から警察や市内。ああ、
Bro, the amount of times Usopp was hit the back of his head, bro, I'm surprised you don't have a concussion. What are we about to see now, bro? I can't even remember where we go from here, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Like, these manga chapters were a, a while ago. Like, even with the thing with the revolutionaries, like I was saying last episode, like, oh yeah, the revolutionaries, oh, this is... Vegapunk met Dragon there, the revolutionaries are the ones that have the books. No, the books are at Elboff. Completely forgot about that. I'm like Sanji. And it looked like a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> he just had a haircut, guys, for his head. Reached the height of a giant? I think his tongue has gotten longer, too, no? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your tongue's always hanging out your mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Luffy. My brain storage, bro. His actual brain is basically a hard drive now. His, his head got too fucking big. He needed an external head, bro. He needed an external head. <laughs> Chopper's getting hyped now, too. Like, oh, bet. I can learn some more about medicine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shadow clone jutsu. <laughs> yeah, her job is literally just to create sustenance and take care of their bathroom needs so they don't have to stop working. Fucking hilarious. Mm. <laughs> Luffy's like, I don't understand any of the, anything you're saying. <laughs> bro, that'd be so fucking lit, bro. Oh my god. All humankind can share the same brain someday. That is a wild statement. Yeah, ideology because people have different points of views. <laughs> now for real if you kill him you're gonna have a huge bounty on your head bro but that's how that's how fucking passionate he is about this like you fuck with my father bro Is it attracting insects? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god. Literally everybody just got electrocuted with, along with the bugs. Back to Sanji and them? Shaka? 
Ah, <laughs> he's showing footage of Luffy and them. <laughs> <laughs> I should have turned off the saber. She just wants to show her the fucking <laughs> beetle. Like, what? <laughs> oh, he knows. Oh, Momonosuke. Yeah, how so is it a failure in his eyes? Pink. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Just the color? <laughs> oh yeah, perfectionist. That's right, okay. Needs to be exact same color and everything. That's fine. Gives Momo his own distinction. <laughs> to have attacked Sake 200 years ago? <laughs> I love this shit. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, Sea Beast. There's a ship coming in. I wonder whose ship that is. World government. These are the motherfuckers we saw a couple episodes ago. I mean, there's, is there really a need for the mask, bro? Like, we, we already know who you are, man. We already know. Damn, bro. That was a quick episode, but it was so good, dude. So good. All right, guys. What another spectacular episode of One Piece. I mean, every episode at this point is just... If you've made it this far at One Piece and you're watching this shit, like, you are fully in love with this show and this story. I mean, that's just the way it is. Ah, oh, dude, the fucking continuing backstory, and we got an actual flashback of, you know, Vegapunk and Dragon meeting at Oha or Ohara, and they're a little bit of their conversation that they had, and this was before Dragon even started the Revolutionary Army, and it was l shortly later that year when he did, um, with Yvonne and uh, Kuma, and that those are who the founding members are. And so they were just known as the Freedom Fighters back at the time. And, and remember, as I said earlier, the last episode that we watched, I was saying, like, oh, yeah, okay, that's right. The fucking revolutionaries are the one that took the book since, like, Vegapunk was alluding to who else was there. And you saw the books getting picked up and whatnot. But actually, that was just me assuming from, like, what I had read so long ago. Like, okay, that, that makes sense. But... This is, this is what I'm talking about. There's so much info and there's so much in-depth dialogue and whatnot in, in the manga and like how long ago that really was in terms of the amount of chapters that have, you know, that are past this episode. I mean, it's it, it, I, I can't remember every little detail. You know what I'm saying? Unless I was keeping up with, like, I, I'm not one to keep up with, like, the manga. Like, okay, where's the anime at? Let me go check this chapter and, like, reread it and shit. Like, I, I don't like to do that because you sort of get a revitalized experience just watching it for the first time on the screen and you know get that same sort of like first time feeling you know even though i have read it like i don't remember every little detail so just like this episode for example it's like oh yeah that's what actually happened where uh i was thinking the revolutionary is the one that took the books no it was elbaf you know we saw fucking what's his face uh one of the giants that we saw way back in in early days of one piece uh where um those two were fighting i i think the one that was getting the books in the water that that one looked like the one one of the ones that helped luffy and them in ennis lobby and then the other guy that was up top out of the water and kind of like tying up the bags of the books that was brogy i think his name is was is it brogy or one of the ones that's way back in like, I think like around like episode 100-ish or so, or maybe even before that. Like this is a long time ago 
in uh, the story. But, I mean, those type of callbacks, right? It's like, oh my god, that's so exciting to see that character again. And so since they were the ones that they knew the value of the books because their captain was the one that told them to retrieve them and then they would, like, hold them safe and, you know, make sure that they would be, you know, they wouldn't be fucked with or, or, or taken away from the government and whatnot because the, the O'Haran sacrificed themselves to save those books. And the one who knew that they sacrificed themselves for that for a good cause and it was sort of a victory for them was Saul himself since he was there and was the one that saved Robin. And because he had all those bandages on him, that was because he stayed on the island, I'm assuming. And he was the one that ordered them to get those books, and they took him to Elboff. Which is just fucking crazy. And then Vegapunk then went to Elboff and read all of the books, so he has all that information up in his head, as well as the books being over at Elboff. Which is not somewhere you can just fucking go. Like, I don't think the government can just go there. I mean, it's literally an island of giants. You're not gonna just be able to fucking do what you want at Elboff, you know what I'm saying? So that's a very good place to keep him safe. And then also Vegapunk has all of that knowledge up in his head now, as Shaka was explaining to Sanji and them. And the closure for Ro being like her, seeing her, that smile on her face as tears are coming down her face. I mean, again, like just absolutely beautiful. And then they go on to, to the control room and they eventually see a video feed of Luffy and like to at least know that he's okay see what he's up to and that's pretty much all we saw with them and then the rest of the episode we saw luffy and vegapunk uh talking and and them just like conversing what what what's going on with his head because bonnie was like you know recognize remember that his head was huge like what the fuck happened to your head and he literally cut it like he literally took his head off and, and it's basically like a hard drive now up at that punk records and all of his information in his head and then his six clones it's fed back to punk records and that's the antenna, the apple on his head, that's an antenna. So, absolutely insane. Like, he literally turned his brain into an external hard drive because it got so fucking big. That's crazy. Got that info. Uh, continuing to see Bonnie threaten him because of how pissed she is at what you know he did to her father, obviously. And Vegapunk recognized that. He was like, it's no wonder that she wants to kill me, like, for what I did to her father. Um, and then... Got a little bit of info on that robot too. Uh, him saying that it was apparently a giant robot that was used to attack the sacred land of Mary Joyce 200 years ago or some shit like that, I think he said. So that's not one of his creations. And that's very interesting that apparently it attacked the sacred Holy Land 200 years ago. I mean, that's that's crazy. So what the fuck is that robot? Like, there's got to be more background info on that, I'm sure. So that's that's fucking exciting in itself. And then um I think that was about it besides like the, the flashback that we got in the beginning of the episode and, and seeing dragons and Vegapunk's conversation and you know them talking to each other. I mean, goddamn, what a what a good fucking episode. Like every every episode is just so good. Like whether it's action packed or not, like there's not much action going on in these episodes, but the dialogue, the amount of info we're getting. You know the backstory and stuff like that like this is this is the like the meats the stuff that you live for in one piece combined with all the action and comedy that is a is along for the ride whenever shit gets hot you know what i'm saying i mean uh dude it's so good so another amazing episode of one piece 1097 in the books fucking amazing that's going to do it for me if y'all enjoyed the reaction please like down below comment subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell so the next one's dropping i'll see you on the next one y'all be good deuces